Okay, introductions. Round two. First, what is an introduction for an FAV? What's the purpose? Jen. Good. Give a broad overview of of what it is. Yeah. What is that? What it is? What What are we giving a broad over, overview of more than anything else? Yeah. What do you mean by that? What it covers? The topic. Okay. So this is the one place where you really want to have in your introduction. You want to just introduce the topic. Again, that broad idea that maybe even goes beyond the actual essay. So if you're talking about love being a, a, a matter of perception, you know, in Mr. Night's Dream, you can just talk about love and how it's something we all perceive, just in general. You can talk about that. Anything else? What else does an introduction do? What's his purpose? Okay. What else is in there? Yeah, that's where your thesis goes, right? What's that? Background information. Gives you background information. Good. What kind of background information? Okay. Exactly. Specific to the topic. All right, good. Here's some things I wrote down. So lead into the body. Explain what the body will discuss. We kind of said that. Introduce the topic. Very good. Grab attention. Um, this is, I know, like you're, you're writing an essay because your teacher tells you to, but you want to actually start thinking that, you know, really take ownership and pride in your work and consider that in the future people will be choosing whether they want to read your, your work or not. You might be writing a, for a newspaper or a blog or maybe a, a letter to a college. And they, the reader is going to choose whether they want to read or whether they stop reading. So you want to grab someone's attention with an introduction. You also want to provide background information for that and present the thesis. Okay. And yes, I can give you this PowerPoint later if you want. All right. So this is, we are talking about an introduction to a literary analysis essay. And it analyzes literature. Um, first, you want to begin with that claim, which, which um, we also call this the thesis statement. So here's a one. People appear one way, and maybe they look nice, smile, look pretty well. So, if you notice in this, just like we talked about earlier, you've got the uh, the work, the author. The method using several characters, and then the effect. All right. First, after you create your thesis, you want to summarize the, the story enough for the reader to understand the analysis, even if she has not read the work. You want to treat your audience like people who are well read, maybe seniors at MIT, that maybe they read Hamlet, but it's been a while, so they need a little refresher. You want to, in your introduction, you want to actually summarize a little bit of the plot, just so people know kind of what's going on in general. Yes, before, yeah, before the thesis, you got it. So, and also, do you want to just summarize the plot in general? What, what part of the plot do you want to summarize? Specific. Yeah. Specific to. So, here is. Right? It's, it's still kind of like a rough draft. Um, 
Again, you want to make sure the claim, the thesis, goes with the summary. And there's some, something we can do here now that we have the, the summary. We can change what what is kind of in here that we can get rid of or is maybe repeated. Hamilton Shakespeare, right? Well, now we know with that thesis statement, you can get rid of at some point your, your author and, and, and title in the thesis statement if it's earlier in the summary. So here's the revised summary. Shakespeare's vocabulary encountered by Hamlet. Also, notice um, only summarize the plot. Like we said, only summarize the plot that's related to your thesis. In this case, you know all these little things here, like um, his father, the king, has just died, and his mother remarries Hamlet's uncle Claudius, no less than two months later. That's kind of sketchy, right? If you were, you know, if your mother remarries after her husband is murdered, well, that's a curious first reality kind of thing that goes with our thesis statement. Hamlet seeks revenge by killing Claudius. Doesn't that sound kind of like the thesis? You know, it's one way, but it's the uh, plot in here. That was kind of an idea when we're not as sweetly seen. There, there you go. So make sure you choose the thesis. Um, let's go on to this. Grabber. people call it the book. Um, you should begin your essay before the summary, before the topic. Something that catches the reader's attention. Some options. First one, rhetorical question. You change any part of the world. Changing life in other larger Um, this one is kind of like, you know, we see a lot of essays start with this question, um, so it can get kind of cheesy, but it's an option. Um, and then I want to put, put your piece. You know, you want to, by arising the reader's curiosity in the beginning, it brings audience into an Um, a powerful statement, some sort of bold statement, bold opinion, or maybe a bold fact about life that, again, grab the audience of a, a bold thing. I wouldn't worry about what work to start with. I'd be focused much more on if you follow that method of you know naming the effects, the method, the author and title, active verb. I bet you you won't even be thinking about that. Yeah. You know, email me your thesis if you're like I, this starts with a funny word. Right? Okay. Um, one more grabber. Irony or humor. Sometimes start with a joke. Obviously, it should be related to the thesis statement. Um, speaking of which, um, make sure it is appropriate to the piece you're writing. If you, you don't want to begin with a joke and then go on to discuss the Black Plague in the Middle East, so make sure um, you, your joke is in good taste and it's appropriate for the piece. You can start with something like that. Um, here's another one. This is Am I talking at all about Hamlet? Nope. What am I talking about here that's going to relate to that Hamlet? I think it's so. I think it's so, right? 
idea of the piece of literature, the main idea, unless it's just, just like heading. Yeah. Okay. So start with your theme, your topic first. All right. Next, do you need something for you know, if I just went and trade the hand, that would be weird. So we need what's called a pivot pin. And you may have heard of this before. We pivot from talking about general, like, you know, appearance versus reality to act, the actual play. And in this case, Hamlet is the story of those very nasty in my book. You see how that pivot setting both combines this earlier stuff as well as Hamlet. Uh, right? It kind of connects the two. So another name for pivot sentence is it's just a transition. All right. So here is the final introduction. There is. Another example, just to show uh, um, here's that introduction. This one's a little different. We start with, and this is in many books, setting is dictated by a character D. Another specific problem for the character. In the Lord of the Flies, they're willing to. So we already actually go in the Lord of the Flies pretty quick. Um, in the middle of it, though, there is that rapper. So this person actually chose to talk about in the middle. You can do it in different ways. The point is you have sort of three parts. You've got grabber and your sort of just philosophical discussion of the theme or the main idea. You've got your focus on uh, the actual text. And then at the very end, you've got your thesis statement. All right. Make sense? Any questions? No, no. 